Now, a public inquiry into the NHS infected blood scandal has begun to hear witness statements. Thousands of people with haemophilia were infected with HIV or hepatitis C in the 1970s and 1980s through contaminated blood products. More than 2,000 are thought to have died. The former High Court judge who's chairing the inquiry, Sir Brian Longstaff, thanked people who'd submitted written statements, which he said could move people to tears or provoke indignation. I've already, already read a large number, more than once, some uh, a number of times. Some are harrowing, some incredibly moving, and some chillingly factual. All are valuable. Katie Walford is from Dali Abbey. Her dad, David Hatton, died from infected blood in 1998 when she was just 10 years old. Hello, Katie. Hi, Steve. Remind me briefly what happened to your dad. So my father was one of the haemophiliacs. He had a blood condition where his blood couldn't clot properly. And because of that, he had to receive factor eight product. Uh, the only problem is that then went on to seal his fate and kill him in the end because it was contaminated with HIV and hep C. And this was over 20 years ago, back in 1998. 21 years ago, yeah. Why has this inquiry taken so long? Your guess is as good as mine. And it's something that is a very hot topic whenever anybody asks me questions, uh, both personal and doing things like this. And I think what's best to do is just to keep going forward with it. And instead of asking the questions that we'll never really truly know the answers and concentrate on the fact that this inquiry has every potential to be able to get the truth. How did you feel the moment you found out that there was going to be an inquiry? It was a very uh, confusing time because... Because of how long it had been, um, it was something that was quite overwhelming and to an extent exciting, I want a better word, but it was something that you were like, right, okay, let's get this going now. Uh, but it has been very much a start of a very long, winding, emotional road. So the judge has begun to hear witness statements. Uh, you and your mum have been asked to write the statements each too. How, how difficult was that to do? It was very difficult. I don't think there was any amount of preparation I could have made because I try and be logical when the logic is needed, like with facts and dates and things like that. But you can't help but have that emotional tidal wave. And it was very difficult. I had to stop and start it quite a lot. And thankfully, I've got a huge support network. So I did have a lot of people I could find in. Now, ahead of these public hearings, the government has announced more financial support for people affected, uh, affected sorry, a, a total of £75 million. Now, how do you feel about that? The problem is when uh, discussing anything regarding money, it's that it then leads on to other questions. I think my main concern was the fact that the the fact that it was released today was actually really distasteful because whenever you involve money, it then becomes a, well, how much is that going to be? Who's going to pay for that? Is it going to come out of this pocket, that pocket? And it ends up actually deterring away from the fact that we need to be here for the inquiry. And it's not about compensation. It was a financial aid. And there have been quite a few issues where they've considered it as compensation. And that's not what it is. So in that case, do you feel as though today has been a little tainted for you? Most definitely. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head really there because today was meant to be a time for us to be able to start the process and for these individuals brave enough to tell their story, to get their truth out. And now we've got this money thing hanging over our heads and it makes us feel guilty. But people need that money to have a better quality of life that for so long they've been de they've been denied. Now, you mentioned uh, people's bravery there and the long road that this has, has, has started today, this week, this inquiry could take two years, maybe more. Are you prepared? And if so, what is your ideal outcome? My ideal outcome is for the truth to be known. Whatever that truth is, for it to be out in the open and for the thousands of people 
to have their story told and no longer swept under the carpet because I do feel for so many years people were treated like a dirty secret and that's not what they are. They are human beings who deserve a right for a good quality of life and it's been denied for far too long. Casey, thank you for coming in and sharing your story. Do thank keep in you. touch. Uh, from Darley Abbey, that's Casey Walford here talking about her father, David Hatton.